All right, wake up. Why don't you put on a little makeup? Why'd you leave your keys up on the table? You wanted to. <clears throat> File new, no. File new movie. You can go away. And you can go. go. All right, that's, that's recording. recording. This is not as tight as I wanted it. All right. Okay, okay. so. Hello class, you've made it. This is the final lecture. Today we are talking about something very fancy called the difference quotient. The difference quotient is calculus. This is how we are going to find the slope of any equation at any point, if it, assuming it can be found. What we're gonna do is we're going to find tangent lines to graphs and Basically, this is what calculus is. It, calculus is applying this principle uh, to all kinds of different sort of functions and then uh, taking it and doing it in reverse to other kinds of functions. This is the last time that math will be about everything, that this pre-calculus class that you've taken is a huge survey. And every math class that you've ever taken before now has been about everything that we've always done triangles and area and functions and transformations of functions and sine and cosine and everything has been building in every direction and now for the rest of your life if you take a math class it will be about one thing it will be about doing one thing analyzing statistics finding slopes of functions finding areas under curves stuff like that that math you have gotten the foundation of all things, and from now on, it's about one particular thing at a time. So this particular thing that we're gonna do now is what you're, if you take calculus, is what you're doing all next year, is that we've got functions that look like this, okay? So here's my f of x, and I picked something kind of cubically polynomial. I have a real cubic that I'll pull up in just a second, but, what you can imagine doing is being some kind of like a skier who's on their two planks trying to go uh, ski, this is your mountain slope. So you can see that there's my two planks going that way, going that way, going that way, going that way, going that way. All of these are what are called tangent lines. So you remember, a tangent line is a line that touches a curve, and when you did this in geometry, the curve was a circle, but it touches the curve at only one place. So I'm not very good at drawing these, but you can imagine, especially the flat ones are easy to see, that it touches it at only one spot. That, and maybe I'll try a slanted one, like that, something like that. That there's a spot where it, uh, barely gets right there and it's not intersecting it more than once. This is what it is to have a tangent line. So um, Newton and a German guy named Leibniz, at the same time in the uh, 17th century, they both had the idea of how to do this with limits. So the last thing we learned was limits. People had started fiddling around with this. And because they had the idea of limits, it then occurred to them, we can do this with geometry with tangent lines. So you, you imagine that you pick some spot, and I've kind of muddied that up, so I'm gonna pick another one here. Um, you pick some spot to call it uh, x, that the distance we've traveled right here is x, and if this is f of x, then the height of the function right there is going to be f of x. So that's gonna be the point that we're at right there. Now, in order to try to draw a line, you need to have a slope. So you're gonna pick some other spot over here and you're gonna do what we always do, which is you make a, a slope equation where you subtract the y's and divide by subtracting the x's and that's rise over run, that's slope. So the idea is that we've picked some additional distance h to go. 
So that means that our x coordinate right there is x plus h. And then our y coordinate is we have to plug that x plus h into the function to get the height of the function right there. So that's going to be f of x plus h. So that's a point. So now we've got some x's and we've got some y's. So the slope of this line, of that line right there, is rise over run is f of x plus h minus f of x all over the differences, the difference in the x's. That, that's x plus h minus x. So that's pretty obvious here. But the problem is what we're going to get when we do this is not a tangent line. We're going to get what is called a secant line. So let's, let's kind of, uh, a tangent line is one that touches at only one spot. And a secant line, this is back to geometry, not trig, uh, is one that uh, touches in two spots, touches in two points. So back, you know, when you were in geometry class and you drew a tangent line like that versus a secant line like that, how many spots does it touch in? So the cool idea that uh, Leibniz and Newton had was to say, well, if I just make this h value smaller and smaller and smaller till that the point that I'm comparing it to is right up next to it, then I will get the tangent line. Then I will get that it is touching it only at one spot. At the, so the, you can use your big words here. The limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient of this slope formula will tell you the instantaneous slope at that point. So, so you see here in this equation that we've made, this numerator, this denominator could greatly simplify. We've got x minus x, that goes away. So the big deal here, the big deal, the difference quotient is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So you can see we have a problem that if I just try to plug in 0, I'm going to get something very horrible. I'm going to get uh, 0 over 0. But that's why we invented limits. This has a removable discontinuity. There's a way for us to solve that. So um, if I have here a uh, cubic function, x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 3, you can see that that tangent line at one, it better have a slope of zero, that there better be a way for me to find a s slope of zero right there at one. But if I pick any number for h, if I move any amount to the left or to the right, I'm not going to get a slope of zero. I'm going to get a slope of something positive if I plug it in there. So let's come up with a way to find the slope of these. Now, uh, let's let's go um, let's go one easier and let's do a uh, a, Q, a quadratic function and let's let's come up with the easiest one of all. Let's just do x squared, the easiest quadratic of all. Here's our old friend, uh, the regular old parabola, and we know that the slope at zero is zero, right? So uh, what I'm doing is we're going to say we've got the function f of x equals x squared, and we know that the graph of that, that the, the tangent there at zero is got a slope of zero. But an interesting question then is what is the slope at one? What is the slope right there at x equals one? So let's do that. Let's say the limit as x, or as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So let's, let's plug in our function. Let's actually do that. What we're going to do is we just square whatever the input is. That's what this function does. So this function says x plus h quantity squared minus x squared all over h limit as, x, as h goes to 0. So we have to square that. We're going to make a big mess here on top of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. Always, the ones I give you will have some nice algebra in them that the x squareds cancel. And then we see of the terms that are left, everybody's got an h. So we can take out the h and get 2x uh, plus h 
all over h, limit as h goes to 0, that the h's cancel. And now it doesn't matter if we plug in h of 0, that we're just going to get 2x. So this is what is called the derivative. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And if I plug in to this derivative function, if I say uh, plug in uh, x uh, at 1, then I get an output of 2. So we can see that the, uh, the slope right there at 1 is 2. So let's, let's test that here. Let's see, let's see what a drawing of that would look like. If I say, so if I've got a slope of 2, I'm going to have a y-intercept of negative 1. So I'm going to say 2x minus 1. And there you can see, if I zoom in, that we've got a pretty sweet tangent line, that no matter how much I zoom in, it's still only touching it at one place. So. There's the difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, limit as h goes to 0. We apply that to different functions, and we get a tangent line.